Hello everyone, it's Michelle Gilmartin here. And today we're gonna to have a little fun with the Scan and Cut with the Rotary Auto Blade Kit and the or the Rotary Auto Blade. Um, the distinguishing fact is if you have um, an SDX 330D or if you have an SDX 325, it came with the Rotary Blade in it. So your Rotary Blade is a cartridge with essentially a little a tiny rotary blade um, on a wheel that goes around and around. It's pretty cool to watch it cut. If you have an SDX 230 or an XDX 225, then you can use the Rotary Auto Blade Upgrade Kit, and that will allow you to do the use the rotary blade on that machine. So what's in the box, in the kit? First of all, you don't need this kit if you already have a 330D. But what's in here is the cartridge and a rotary blade, as well as an activation card so that you can use the rotary blade on your SDX 230 or XDX 225 machine. So, and then this is just what the rotary blade replacement box looks like. So, rotary blade is a consumable, just like your scan and cut regular blades, meaning at some point it wears out and you have to replace it. So, um, we do have replacement blades. So, we're going to cut some interesting stuff today. So, let me explain how I best utilize the rotary blade. First of all, I don't use it to cut my cotton fabric because my fabric blade and my thin fabric auto, um, mat. My fabric mat, my thin fabric auto blade do a perfect job of cutting my cotton. So the rotary blade takes a lot longer to cut. And also the, you know, I use it for things that I can't cut with my regular blade. So here's just a few things that I've started on cutting. Look at this. This is like sequin fabric. This is a piece of flannel. Ooh, look at this one. This is French terry. Here's some minky. Oh, and you're gonna like this one. This is the bubble minky, the minky that minky dot. So I have a stack of different fabrics here that we're gonna give a little test to this afternoon, and including some things that you probably wouldn't think of cutting, but on your um, scan and cut. But here's some um, some really sheer fabric, some um, sequin fabric, and some. Oh God, gotta have spandex in there, right? Along with. Here's some minkies, some t regular terry cloth, some velvet, because you know, the velveteen you use for the Kimberbell, some Kimberbell felt. Here's the French terry, the flannel, the minky. Here's um, actually some stretch knits, two different weights. One's pretty thin, one's a little bit thicker. And some kind of, it's kind of a duck weave kind of thing. It's not real burlap, it's kind of faux burlap. But you know what? There's things that I cut with my scan and cut with the rotary blade that you may not have even thought about. So this is Decaville and Decor Bond. These are both interfacings that I use a lot for bag making. And to me, the whole bag making process is much more precise if my pieces are precisely cut. So obviously I cut my vinyls and my leathers and things like that with my scan and cut, but the rotary blade allows me to bring in cutting of the interfacings and um, stabilizers that I use in it. So this is Decor Bond, this is Decaville, this is your SF-101, this is um, Paltex um, with a fusible on one side, and look at this, we're even gonna try to cut batting. So stay tuned, um, we're gonna do a couple at a time and see how everything works out. All right, first off, um, I am using my standard tack adhesive mat and um, I am going to start by cutting some of the things that you know we might have thought about cutting before and had a little bit of a difficult time with. And I'm gonna try to put somewhat similar things together in on the mat. So here's some flannel. This is the Kimberbell flannel. I'm just gonna stick that on there. And here's our Kimberbell velveteen. We'll stick that down. And then let's see what else can I... Oh, we can put the flannel on the mat with that. And then what else do I wanna stick on here? Oh, let's put this French terry down on the mat. Oh, that's not, that's a stretch. Let's put the stretches together. Let's just put the cherry cloth. 
All right. So we have kind of a different variety of fabrics here on the mat, but they do have one thing in common is none of these are stretch fabrics. So these are all um, woven fabrics and they're not, they're non stretchy. So I'm going to go ahead and load my mat in. And one thing I have noticed is when you do use your rotary cutter, um, your rotary blade on things like this, like the terry cloth that's kind of fuzzy, it's always a good idea to check it before you start. Sometimes you get some little debris stuck in there. It's a great time for you to use your tweezers and, you know, kind of remove that debris. So the rotary blade goes in just the same as the others. The cartridge slides down in there and you lock it in place. And then um, I'm going to go back here so I can... I can edit this. So I just picked a simple flower. And I did the flower um, not because it has um, it has bias edges on it. So I thought that the bias edges really would show the uh, preciseness of the rotary cutter. When you're cutting on fabrics, you normally would not cut with your scan and cut. So I'm going to do object edit and let's make four of those. And then I'm going to go ahead and scan my mat in, and then I'll put the, the flowers where they need to be. The flower is just one of the built-in designs from the scan and cut. I'm going to select OK. And then I'm going to select cut. So just like the other um, uh, settings on the scan and cut, the rotary blade has its own set of settings. So let's talk a minute about those. Cut mode, normal or fine. So normal cut mode is for just about everything all the time. Um, it cuts everything. It's a little bit less time to cut. Um, and the most, most fabrics respond just fine to the normal. The fine blade adjustment, that's more for, it, it, it improves the quality of the cutting a little bit, but it does also take longer. It's recommended that you use that when you're using um, uh, things such as lace and silk and satin. We haven't gotten to those yet, so I'm just gonna leave this on normal. And then the blade adjustment area, uh, we want the whole mat, there's nothing to touch there. And uh, including the material area should be on. And we are good to go. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and select start. And you'll see, I'm going to let it cut one, and then I'm going to go ahead and pause the video because you'll see that it takes quite a while to cut one item. And several times during the cut process, it'll stop and re-measure um, re the depth. Also good to know is you should have a mat that's either fairly new or very sticky. I've actually used the rotary cutter with fabric stuck to my fabric mat. Remember, this is an auto blade. It does, it's not going to cut through the mat regardless of what mat you put it on. So um, if you have something that doesn't want to stick to a standard mat, then by all means, go ahead and put it on your fabric mat. That's why I feel like a fabric mat is still a really important part of, a, of anybody's um, repertoire that actually cuts on fabric. So I'm going to let this run and we'll be back when it finishes cutting. So we're just finishing up on the terry cloth. All right, so I'm going to remove my mat and let's see how we did here. So here's my flannel. That's a nice cut. All right, so here's my felt. How many times have you tried to cut felt with your scan and cut? Did you ever get a cut like that? I didn't. All right, and then here's my velvet. Now my velvet looks like I could have gone around twice. 
Maybe not. Maybe I just have to work it out a little bit here. So I've got one area there that looks like it could use a, an extra snip or two. I could have gone around a second time, I suppose, but the rest of it really is pretty perfect. So let me just grab my snips here and we'll take care of this. So it looks like just in the center here. Not bad for velveteen. Again, you can always go around a second time. You can kind of peek. I just thought I'd go for it and see how it did by its own. Plus, I could also use probably a new blade. Wow. There's my terry cloth. Whoops, looks like I got one place. Almost in the same place as the other. That I need to, need to do a snip there. And a snip here. Again... You can always go around twice. It's never going to cut through the blade as through the mat as long as you don't adjust the pressure on the blade. All right. So as you can see, the terry cloth was pretty messy. Let's get the rest of this off. I have a second mat here, so I you always want to start with the clean mat because obviously some fabrics are going to be fuzzier than others. So there's my first batch of four. Let me pause for a moment and I'll go get four more fabrics on the mat. All right, so I am back. Now we have some, um, Thank you. Bye. I don't even know what, the, I don't even remember what this is called, but this is that really thin um, stuff that ravels like crazy. Um, spandex, uh, t-shirt knit, but a thin t-shirt knit, and we have the, um, the sequin fabric. So let's see how we do with these. I'm gonna put my mat in. Oops, no, I'm not, didn't grab it correctly. Let's wait for it to stop. And let's try again. There we go. All right, so I'm scanning my mat in again so that I can move the four flowers into place. Don't you just love these things? I have them everywhere. It's fun, it's the only way I don't lose my utensils, my scan cut utensils. LeMay, that's what that's called. All right, so we have LeMay, we have sparkle fabric, we have spandex, and we have t-shirts. And we're just gonna select cut. Nothing to adjust. And let's see how we do with this batch. I'm just gonna let this cut and I'm gonna pause the video until it's um, done with the last one and I'll be right back. All right, we're almost done. Oh, wait a minute, no, we still have to do the lame here. Not the lame, the um, spandex. All right, I'm gonna unload my mat and we're gonna see how we did with this group of fabrics. I'm gonna start over here with the t-shirt. 
Oh, that was nice. Here's our spandex. One little thing right there I can live with, I suppose. And then here's our lame. Ooh, that's a pretty cut, huh? And here's our sequin. All right, all fabrics I would never try to cut probably with my skin, original skin and cut blades. Let me get that off of there. So there's our spandex. Here's our t-shirt, really thin t-shirt. And sequin. And ooh, can we get this lame even off of here without it fraying? Because it always frays, you know? Probably need a, a better uh, spatula than just the little plastic one here, but there we go. All right, so um, I actually happen to have a clean mat behind me here since I went and cleaned it um, while we were um, cutting this one. All right, so now we're gonna get a little interesting. We're gonna do batting. So I'm gonna stick my batting on there. And I'm gonna do my SF 101, because these are things that you normally would cut. Maybe I'll put that one with the sticky side up. We're going to cut uh, Decaville Light, which is something I use in handbags all the time. That one doesn't wanna stick that way. We'll stick it down that way. And then I'm going to put um, Peltex down here. I'm concerned about this one. I don't know if it's gonna stick. It might need some tape. Yeah, I think I'll tape this one. All right, I am gonna use a little painter's tape to keep this down to the mat. The um, the Peltex comes on a roll, and sometimes it's really hard to get something that stiff to not curl when you get it off the roll. Plus, it's um, it's got fusible on one side, so I can't really iron it. All right, so everything else I think is stuck down pretty good. And the, so I'm figuring that this is going to be our challenging set of, um, of cuts. So let's see how we do. All right, so I scanned and placed my flowers. And here we go. Looks like we're gonna do the Peltex first. So this Peltex is one of the things that I think is really, um, works out really well if you can pre-cut it because a lot of times the Peltex, if you use it in something has to be cut a little bit smaller than what's on the outside that goes over it. So this makes a really nice precise cut. And clearly if I was gonna use it for a flower, this would be an easier way to cut it than um, to actually draw and try to cut it by hand. Ooh. Oh, and then we're going in for the batting. So the one thing I haven't done is I haven't checked my blade to see if I have any debris on there. Um, and I probably should have after I cut the, um, after I cut the veluri stuff. So we'll see. I will take a peek at these and make sure they're cut before I peel them off simply because I didn't check the debris. I know the blade's new enough, so I know it's not the blade, but it can still get fuzzy stuff on it. Cause if you're, I'm looking here and I'm seeing a little bit of purple here, that probably came off of this. So the other thing I could have chosen to do as well is if I would have selected fine instead of normal, then it would have taken a little bit longer to cut and maybe on these, uh, one, on the terry cloth, that would have been a better way to go. 
I'm just going everything for the just the default settings to see how just the default works. All right, let's see how we did. Let me unload my mat here. I don't know, maybe that one could have gone around again. Let's see. I'm just gonna lift up an edge. It's hard to tell with white. No, it looks like it's pretty well cut, so I'm gonna just pull it out. All right, so I'll start with the Peltex since I have it halfway peeled off. pretty thick. It's about like maybe a sixteenth to of an inch, close to maybe one eighth of an inch thick. So just in the center. So this one actually did cut. Um, it's just the same place in the center here where it clicks. And this maybe would have been better if I would have used the fine setting instead of the normal setting. But yeah, that's still pretty good. Can't complain about that. Let's see our SF-101. Ooh, perfect. I'm gonna make you wait till last to see the batting. Here's my de decor bond. All right. Look at that. All right, so I have one more set of four fabrics, that, but if this hasn't convinced you, you need a rotary blade in your life um, with your scan and cut, I don't know what to tell you, but we got one more, so stand by. All right, so for our last mat of four fabrics, we have um, Minky Dot, we have um, a, a minky that's like a low pile minky, but still a minky. My last stabilizer, which is Decor Bond. And I have um, another t-shirt knit, this one a little bit um, heavier than the first one. I am gonna change the setting to fine. I'm gonna change the setting to fine, not really for these two, but for these two. So um, you'll be able to see how when this trims, um, I'll leave it on when it cuts the black, that it takes even longer than normal to trim. But let's see how it does with that really fussy, hard to cut fabric. I'm gonna pause for a moment while I scan my fabric and place my flowers. All right, so I'm gonna change that setting so that I'm going to use the fine instead of the normal. So uh, here's my cut mode rotary blade. I'm gonna go ahead and change that to fine. That's the only thing I'm gonna change. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select cut. And it's coming down to the minky, so let's see what it does. So I think you're gonna notice that it makes a series of small, even more small cuts, and it takes much longer to go around. But this will be interesting to compare to the earlier cuts where on some of the fussier, fluffier fabrics like the, um, the terry cloth, why I had a couple of little, uh, little nubs where I had to use the, the scissors to snip that. I'm hoping that by changing this to fine, that the fine will, sol will solve that and that with our minky, we won't have to do that. I will tell you though, of all the things that you can cut on your scan and cut, 
Minky's going to make the most mess out of your mat, but it seems to clean off really easily. I'll just warn you that about that. So you can see that the cutting time, which has been about four to five minutes on all of the different fabrics that I've put on the mat so far, my cutting time for this, these four has now been bumped up to 16 minutes. But you know what, if it needs it, if you need that extra time to get a, a perfect cut, there's nothing wrong with that. Just know that if you don't, you don't need it on everything, um, you may not wanna give up that time. And you absolutely can cut cotton fabric with your rotary cutter if you choose to do it. I mean, I just don't because I have no trouble cutting fabric with my fabric blade and my fabric mat, but you could cut it with a rotary cutter. When it gets done cutting the black, I think I'm going to pause it and see how it looks because I don't think I want to spend the rest of the time when I don't, when I know that I won't need it. The normal will be fine for the other three fabrics. All right, so I'm gonna do pause. And from the pause, I can access my, uh, my settings and I am going to change that back to normal. But while I'm paused, we're gonna take a look at this. Look at that. Perfect cut on Minky. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that off the mat just so that it doesn't get sucked back in there. See, look at all that mess. Comes right off though. And it's pretty impressive for Minky. All right, so we have three more. I'm going to go ahead and pause while it cuts these. We have a regular standard Minky. We have decor bond and we have another t-shirt knit. All right, let's take a look at these. Oop. All right, so I'm going to gather all of the different fabrics that we cut for a final shot here. So um, I'm going to pause the camera for just a moment. All right, and here we have it. We have two different weights of t-shirt stretch. We have spandex, 
we have um, sequin, glitter, by, glitter sequins. We have lame, we have French terry, terry. We have flannel, we have minky dot, we have short-haired minky, we have felt, we have velveteen. And in our stabilizer area, we have Peltex, we have batting, we have Decor Bond, we have De Decaville Light, and we have SF 101. These are all things that I would probably never um, cut with my regular scan and cut. Or I did, actually some of the stabilizers I did, but um, I can cut them much easier with the rotary blade. So again, if you have an SDX 220, five or 230d then all you need is this rotary blade auto clip um, it's going to give you the cartridge the rotary blade and the activation card and you too can use this rotary blade on your scan and cut if you have an sdx 330d like i'm using today or you have the um, sdx 325 you already have it you're good to go you're ready to go you your machine came with an auto blade I hope you enjoyed this and I hope it made you think about some of the things that you might have tried to cut in the past with your skin and cut that maybe the rotary blade would make that much easier. So thanks for watching. Bye.